Hey guys, today we're going to be changing the transmission control module on this second generation Mazda 3 uh, because the car has ceased to shift properly. And uh, this doesn't seem to be all that uncommon of a failure uh, for the first and second generation Mazda 3 as well as, you know, some of the Mazda's other models like the uh, Mazda 5. So here we are with the car on, looking at the dash, and you can see we have a check engine light on the left side, and in the center we have the automatic transmission warning light. Another thing you're going to notice is there are no lights uh, indicating what gear the car is in. And uh, if you were to try and shift it into reverse or uh, drive, uh, you just get this big clunk and a jerk of the car, but it won't actually move when you step on the gas. You can shift into neutral, though. So if this failure happens to you, but you really need to move the car from its uh, current location, you probably will be able to shift into third. Um, I was able to do that by taking the shift lever, moving it down to this manual position, and then bumping the lever back a couple times uh, till it was in third gear. There was nothing on the dash indicating it was there, uh, but I was able to slowly move the car into the garage. So now we're looking under the hood and the transmission control module is located underneath uh, the battery battery box assembly. So we're going to need to remove that or at least get it out of the way so that we can access where that module is. So to start what we need to do is take these clips, just pull them out a little bit. Um, there's a couple of them all around so that we can get the uh, battery cover off. Now that the battery cover's off, we can go ahead and remove the two leads to the battery uh, by using a 10 millimeter socket. So we're going to remove the negative lead first, get our socket on there. We need to loosen this clamp until it's loose enough that we can just pull the lead off like that and then uh, just tuck it away off to the side. Next we can take our 10 millimeter socket and loosen the clamp on the positive side and then take this lead off and tuck it away from the side. Now we have to remove the bracket securing the battery, which there are another uh, two 10 millimeter nuts on each side of it that we have to remove. And once those nuts are gone, we can go ahead and t lift up the bracket and take it out of the battery. Then we can go ahead and grab the battery and pull it up and out. Next what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to release the cables that are attached to this front part of the battery box. And uh, you can see they've got these clips right here. And you can just grab a pair of pliers uh, if you can't just pull them straight through to compress the little tabs so that you can release it. So I've got this one up here and I've got another one down here that I have to remove. After all the cables are released from this front part of the battery box, you can see here we can just lift it up, un unlatch it from the other piece, and pull it out. Now let's go ahead and pull off this cover over here and there's uh, nothing really latching or holding it in. And then we need to remove these two electrical connectors. These electrical connectors have these levers that you have to pry kind of outwards a little bit like that in order to get over the little pegs. From there you can just flip the connector up and pull the connector off. Now that we've freed these connectors, let's go ahead and take them out of these slots they're in and just in general take all of the wires and cables out of this battery box. One of the uh, slightly trickier items to remove is this uh, zip tie holding the uh, positive battery cable down. Um, so if you can't pop this out, don't be afraid to just take some snips and uh, go ahead and cut that. And once that's cut, we can go ahead and pull the cable free of it. Now we're looking into the bottom of the battery box where you can see we have three more 10 millimeter bolts to remove. Now that all of that is done, we can go ahead and take the battery box out. Um, you may have to wrestle with some of the cables near the front and what, you know, what I find you have to do is try and stuff the cable down underneath the front of the battery box and pull the box up on top of it and uh, just go you know, one cable at a time. But after that, you should be able to pull out your box. Okay, now that the battery box is removed, um, 
what we see here is we see a, a vibration dampening weight uh, attached to the engine mount and we need to get this out of the way to give us a little bit more working space so what we're going to do is we're going to remove those uh, two 17 millimeter nuts and out comes the weight so now we can kind of see the transmission control module a little bit and uh, this one over here has this wire on a post which is on one of the bolts so what we do is we just grab this and uh, just wiggle it, pull it straight off of the post so that we can see you know this uh, screw over here or this post um, that holds the transmission control module in place. So here we are looking at the TCM from another angle and as you can see it's still mostly covered up. Uh, not a lot of great visibility or working room there. Uh, but let's start by taking off the electrical connector and to do that you need to depress this tab which will unlock the latch and allow you to slide it off. Now since there's not a whole lot of working room what you can do is you can take something slim like a flathead screwdriver or this pry tool and fit it in between the uh, latch and this locking block and through there you can actually push down to unlock it while simultaneously rotating the latch off and then you can just you know use your hand and finish getting the latch off and unplugging the connector. So here's a uh, closer view of the TCM itself and if we go a little bit over you can just make out we see uh, two of the nuts and bolts that secure the TCM and there's another one uh, on the opposite side so you can see like really you're kind of doing this a little bit blind um, a regular 3 8 ratchet and a 10 millimeter socket will, will work for the two screws. You will need to use a little bit of a deeper socket for this bolt mill that we're looking at right here. Um, you know, I, I was able to get brake torque on it and then uh, just kind of used uh, my hand uh, spinning the socket itself to unthread these the rest of the way. Okay, so I've finally gotten the three bolts out and now I can reach down and pull out the old module. So here is the new TCM on top and the old one on bottom and you can see they both have the same part number except for the very last letter. The new one has an H and the old one has a G so that last letter uh, really just looks like it's a revision of this part and uh, if you find a replacement part that doesn't have the exact same letter uh, it could probably still work. Uh, but either way, you know, you can go to any of those Mazda uh, dealership parts sites and plug in your vehicle information to find out which part number you explicitly need. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, new TCM in and then uh, you saw earlier how we can see this hole and that hole that it aligns to. So I'm going to go ahead and align that and then get these two started um, so that at least this third hole which is pretty blind uh, is indexed and I can kind of drop the screw in there. Then what I'll do is I'll uh, kind of use my fingers to uh, manually screw in the screws or you know hold a short socket on top of it and screw it in um, and then uh, once those are almost all the way in then we can see if we can use a tool to finish tightening them. Okay so as you can see I've got my uh, ratchet in there with 10 millimeter on the uh, uh, screw for the TCM and uh, I'm ready to tor set it to final torque and the torque for all three of these is uh, 88 inch pounds or uh, 7.3 foot pounds. Um, it's going to be really difficult to fit a torque wrench in there so don't worry about really hitting that spec uh, uh, right on. Uh, you can just get it snug uh, with your hand and that should be good enough. Now we can go ahead and take the electrical connector, plug it back onto the new TCM and then uh, slide the latch forward to lock it into place. Next we can take this uh, electrical cable assembly and slide it onto the post holding uh, the TCM down. Now we can go ahead and replace the uh, vibration dampener weight onto the engine mount and put the two 17 millimeter nuts back on and then um, you will want to set these to their torque spec because they are engine mounts and uh, that torque spec is going to be 61 newton meters or 44 foot pounds. All right now that we have the uh, engine mount all resecured uh, it's time to go ahead and slide our battery box uh, back in here. 
So just like before, we're going to put the back in first and then we're going to have to maneuver, manipulate, finagle with all of these cables to get it all the way down. Now that the battery box is in, let's go ahead and use the three 10 millimeter screws and uh, put those in to secure it. And then those will get torqued to 15 newton meters or 11 foot pounds. If you recall, we had this uh, zip tie that we cut earlier to get that cable out. Um, go ahead and put that cable back uh, kind of right in that mount. You don't really have to zip tie it back to the mount uh, because that front cover actually has a slot and will uh, hold it in place. But we do want to index it where it's supposed to be. And here is that front battery box uh, panel that we're going to replace. And you can see the cutout right here at the uh, lower right that that cable we just talked about is going to slot right into. So now let's go ahead and put this front battery box cover back in. Um, from the cables down here, you can see from the tabs kind of you know which side of the cover they're supposed to plug into, whether it's this front side or the uh, inside. Um, and uh, just for reference, like the uh, negative battery cable will plug in on the inside of it. So we'll just go ahead and slide this in here, kind of get it around those cables. Make sure they're all on the right side of this cover they're supposed to be. Get it locked into place. All right, the cover's in place. Now we can go ahead and take the cable and uh, pop the uh, plugs or mounts into the cover. Next, we can make sure that our electrical connectors are uh, in their uh, proper spots on this little bracket. And then we can go ahead and plug them into the uh, computer here. So get it down and then use the latch to secure it. Give it a good tug, make sure it's seated. Then we can go ahead and uh, place the cover back on. Now we can go ahead and put the battery back into the battery box and make sure that the negative terminal is uh, facing towards the rear of the car and the positive towards the front of the car. Then we can get the bracket that secures the battery and uh, if you look closely, see if this will focus here or not, but uh, there's arrows on both sides of this that say which way the front is. So we'll align those as, uh, as called for and then slide it over these two posts. And then we'll put the 10 millimeter nuts back on the posts to secure this bracket. And then this will get torqued to seven, foot, seven newton meters or five foot pounds. Then we can go ahead and take the uh, terminals or the cables and put them back on the battery terminals. We'll start with the positive. And then we'll take our 10 millimeter and uh, tighten that down. Then we'll take the negative and do the same. And uh, there's a slot back here for this uh, cable to go into the battery box. Put that over there, and then we'll use our same 10 millimeter to tighten it down. Then lastly, we'll go ahead and put the top battery cover back on. So we've just started the car up after changing the TCM, and as you can see, there's no more check engine light, no more automatic transmission light, and the gear selector is correctly showing that the car is in park. So that's the Mazda transmission module change. Unfortunately, it's not the cheapest part or cheapest repair, but at least it's not outside the realm of doing it yourself and saving a bit on labor.